Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Wenika Yuda. In this video, I will show you 10 best place and best free to visit in Qatar. The suggestions are based on review traveler visits and local insights in Qatar. And stick around until the end of this video, because I have a recommendation the best place for you. Here is a look at the best places and free to visit in Qatar. Number 1, Sukwakif. Located in the heart of Doha, between Al Azmaq Street and Al Ahmed Street. The Sukh is within walking distance from Doha Cornish. This vibrant complex is without doubt one of the most atmospheric places to explore in Qatar. Built on an ancient market site, the area remains the social heart of Doha. Centuries ago, Bedouin would bring their sheep, goats and wool here to trade for essentials. And the entire market area has been cleverly redeveloped to look the part of a 19th century sukh. With mud rendered shops and exposed timber beams, plus some authentic and beautifully restored original Qatari buildings. With booming prosperity, the advent of vast air-conditioned shopping malls and Qatar's rush to embrace the new. Sukhwakif fell into serious decline by the 1990s, and much of the market was destroyed in a fire in 2003. An outcry from Qatar has prompted the authorities to undertake a massive rehabilitation program, one that continues to this day. Such has been the success of this venture that the Sukh keeps growing to accommodate new old alleyways. Despite the ongoing gentrification of the area, the chief business of the Sukh continues unabated. And it remains one of the most traditional marketplaces in the region. This is the place to look for national Qatari dress, including the beautifully embroidered buke, knock, spices, perfumes and out. Number 2. Katara Cultural Village. Also named as the Valley of Cultures, is an interesting place to visit for everyone, especially for those fascinated in traditions, theatre, art and architecture. The cultural village was constructed on reclaimed coastal land on the eastern coast between the Pearl and West Bay to north of Doha and was soft opened in 2010. On the occasion of the Doha Cultural Capital of the Arab World Year, the Valley of Cultures is conceptualized to replicate the Qatari culture through conventional architecture that contains lots of activities. This project is estimated to an approximate US $82 million includes heritage centers, opera house, libraries, an amphitheater, art galleries and other academic facilities. Not to mention cafes, museum facilities, other business establishments, green areas and information center. The entire Qataro complex is built in a fusion of oriental architectural and retro-romantic style. Pretty differently from most of Doha's charming new cultural buildings, elsewhere in the city. A dream long envisioned by H. H. Sheikh who made the Inkalaiva al Thani, Emir of the State of Qatar. The facilities and buildings at Qatar were deliberately constructed at random with the purpose of getting a look and feel like a customary Qatari alfarilla. Other than being a forum for scholars and artists, Katara aims in acknowledging and promoting cultural awareness in Qatar and raising the artistic energies. Through the administration of its different organizations, societies and facilities. Built to epitomize the Qatari traditional architecture, Katara's design makes it a proper environment for cultural, creative intellectual and artistic activities through carnivals, social events, symposiums, exhibitions, concerts and all kinds of artistic expressions. Number 3. The Cornish. One of Doha's most iconic attractions, the Doha Cornish is a 7km stretch of gorgeous promenade overlooking the serene waterfront. Beginning from around the Museum of Islamic Art and ending at the Sheraton Park near the distinctive pyramid-shaped Sheraton Doha Resort and Convention Hotel. With a crescent-shaped walkway around the Doha Bay, the Cornish offers the best views of the city's modern skyline. 
making the epicenter of various occasions such as the National Day celebrations and the National Sports Day. Watch the Dells lighting up the Cornwich in the evenings while on your walk around the bay or simply take a boat ride to soak in the vista of this city. On the subject of lush, the area is not all about glittering skyscrapers and or inspiring architecture. The place is popular with walkers, skaters, joggers and people love to stroll along the Cornwich, especially during the pleasant evenings. Having a breathtaking view of the skyline and a good look at all the illuminated monuments. Number 4. Sea Line. In Said is one of the most popular public beaches in Qatar. I dare say it is even the most popular judging from the crowd that attracts during weekends. Conveniently located less than 60 kilometers south of Doha, Sea Line Beach is a must visit not just for expats and residents, but even for those who are on a layover in Qatar. At the top of the dunes, you'll have an overlooking view of the surrounding areas. The beach, the nearby resorts, and other establishments. You can also walk in the dunes, but make sure you're away from the vehicles. Be careful though, as lots of inexperienced drivers get either stuck or accidents when driving on the dunes. Overlooking the beach are the towering sand dunes which can get crowded with powerful 44 vehicles during the weekend. A ride through the dunes in one of the said vehicles will definitely make for a memorable ride, although it can get dangerous. Number 5. Purple Island. In Qatar has been named one of the best islands in the world by global travel site Big 7 Travel. Big 7 Travel has officially released its annual list of the 15 best islands in the world. Purple Island is ranked no. 14 on the list. The island is located in the al khwarel area north of Doha. The island is located about 50 kilometers north of Doha and is an hour's journey from Doha. The island offers an ideal spot for nature lovers for strolling and exploring. Mangrove forest in shallow lagoons is one of the points of interest on the island. Besides this, you will be pleased to see small fish and crabs, and a number of birds. The main landmark of this place is the wooden bridge that locates within the mangroves and above the water channels, which leads to some hills and Purple Island Beach. You will feel adventurous while passing the canal by the wooden walking way. Purple Island is not a flat sand island. You will notice several low limestone cliffs throughout the islands. While walking, do not walk on bare feet as there are many crab poles on the ground. Number 6. Sakawagra. Alweka Sikh is a 25-minute drive from the south of Doha city centre on the excellent metro train. Opened in 2014, Alweka Old Sikh, more commonly known as Sikwakra, is one of the destinations in the south of Qatar. The seaside traditional market is an odd to Alweka's heritage as a fishing village. Opened in 2014, Alweka Old Sikh, more commonly known as Sikwakra, is one of the destinations in the south of Qatar. The seaside traditional market is an odd to Alwaykor's heritage as a fishing village. While Sukhwakif is more popular, Alwaykor Old Sukh is still worth checking out especially if you love less crowded places. Reminiscent of a traditional Arabian village and market, part of Sukh Alwaykor's charms is its winding alleyways which lead to the beach in Cornish. Walk around the alleyways and courtyards and check out what hidden gems you can find. These passageways are popular with photographers and photography enthusiasts in Qatar. There are restaurants situated along the seaside, facing the parking lot, and the grill section behind the meat and vegetables market. The cuisine you can find is varied although seafood is the most popular fare here. For grilled seafood, try Donat Al Baha barbecue fish, try Yemeni cuisine at Al Fanha restaurant facing the beach, have Italian food at Mercato Antico, Cool down with ice cream from Garissa, or gobble down diner food at Bermagans facing the spacious parking area. While the number of shops seems to be dwindling over the years, there are still markets and shops that you can check out. Out of the 10 zones of Alweka Old Sikh, 
five of them have dedicated market sections for different products such as dates, nuts, fish, cheese, flowers, sweets, women's accessories, perfume, gold, souvenirs, meat, vegetables, fruits, spice, handicrafts, utensils, swords, carpet, birds and animals, wood, and marine equipment. Dotted with old dalbosts along the sand, the Sakao Waker family beach requires swimmers to adhere to proper swimwear. Not allowed on the beach are pets, smoking, fire, barbecue, camping, photography, and swimming is not allowed after sunset. Not a fan of swimming. There are plenty of seats along the beach where you can just sit down and people watch your stare at the horizon. In front of the playground located at the other end of our Waker Old Sook is a promenade where you can freely bike and walk without people getting in your way. Number 7. Villagio Mall. Villagio Mall is a shopping mall located on the Spires Mall in the west end of Doha, the capital city of Qatar. It is located on Awab Street between the Hyatt Plaza and Sports City and has over 200 stores, including many famous brands such as Via, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci & Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Bulgari & Cartier, are just some of the brands found along the rich gold deck hallways of Via the Mall. Inside, the interiors are Italianate themed both as an Italian hill town, but also with a 150 meter long indoor canal with gondolas. A range of cafes and restaurants meet a variety of dietary and budgetary needs. Bringing the kids? There's plenty of entertainment, starting with a gondola ride to the gondola near theme park. Located within the move, this indoor park contains a bowling alley, blazer tag, roller glider, roller coaster, as well as a go-kart track. It also has an only Olympic-sized ice rink, and is the largest in Doha to be accredited by the Ice Skating Institute Asia. Number 8. Mia Park. The Mia Park is located beside the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha that overlooks the waterfront promenade. One of the best and most beautiful green spaces along the Doha waterfront, Museum of Islamic Art Park is home to Richard Zero's vertical steel sculpture, known as Seven. This celebrated artist's first public piece of art in the Middle East. It's also home to cafes with some of the finest city views in Doha, including the Mir Park Cafe, as well as pop-up food trucks. Runners enjoy the one-kilometer crescent pathway around the park, and there's also a kids' play area, if you are someone who is looking to spend some leisure time with friends or family then, Mia Park is an ideal place for which is full of green spaces, leisure activities, and offers blissful views of the Doha skyline. The park also features kiosks and cafe with a menu featuring a wide selection of snacks and beverages, and also offers panoramic views of the Doha's West Bay. Besides this, several fun-filled activities can also be enjoyed here like kayaking, paddle fit, fun games, physical exercises and a lot more. Number 9. Aspire Park Located within Aspire Zone, Aspire Park is one of the most popular family parks in Qatar. It covers 88 hectares filled with plenty of large green spaces. The towering torch dome, the tallest building in Qatar at 300 meters, can be seen from the park. There's a running trail and sand trail going around the park for jogging, running, and walking. It has also been the venue of previous events such as the Aspire Lake Festival and the Aspire International Kite Festival to name a few. The park is also well maintained and is one of the destinations for photography enthusiasts. 
One of the most popular features of the park is the large lake where ducks, geese, and other birds can be found. The lake is sectioned by two bridges, one of which is a fountain. A favorite of children and adults alike, be prepared to get wet when you cross the bridge with the overarching fountains. It gets even better at night, because of the lights at the wooden fountain bridge. You can also find one of Qatar Museum's public art beside the lake at Aspire Park. Perseval by Sarah Lucas is a bronze shire horse sculpture with a cart containing giant mallets. It's a piece of British culture and demonstrates the artist's propensity to re-examine everyday objects in unusual contexts. Number 10. Msharib Downtown Doha. Msharib Downtown Doha is strategically located in the heart of Doha, adjacent to the Amiri Dewan, Sukhwakov, and the financial district across Grand Hamad Street. The nearest metro station is Msharib Station, located on Wadi Msharib Street. The world's first sustainable downtown regeneration project, Msharib Downtown revives Doha's old commercial district with a new architectural language. Comprising over 100 buildings with commercial and residential properties as well as retail and cultural offerings, the stunning Barahat or courtyard lies at the heart of Msharib downtown. It includes niche retail and a variety of alfresco dining options. The Msharib museums are a project by Msharib properties and celebrate the history of Qatar through four heritage houses in the heart of Msharib downtown Doha. The area includes entertainment venues, Qatar Academy Msharib and four hotels, Mandarin Oriental Doha, Al Wadi Hotel and Gallery, Park Hyatt Hotel and a boutique. While modern, the architecture of Msharib is inspired by Qatar's heritage, its proportion, simplicity, space, light, layering, and response to the country's climate. The entire project aims to reverse the pattern of energy-hungry development in Doha. MDD will also house the Doha Design District, a cultural hub for regional and international talent. Alright and that is it for today's video, 10 best place and free to visit in Qatar. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and enable notifications. And share your own Qatar experience in the comments below on my YouTube channel Wena Kayuda, and there is many more videos about Qatar. Bye. See you the next video.